uh, you just missed uh, Van Hoydonk or he just missed you. But we talked about Henrik Larsson and some of the battles you had with him. And I mentioned it with Craig Moore last week. What about some of those battles, Henrik Larsson, when you played up against him? What was the what were things that came to mind? Some of the things that we would have maybe have missed. Some of them will remember, but some of the things that happened. Well, first and foremost, I think you would get sent off with some of the things that went on. Um, no, but we're just talking about players and um, who you come up against and who was the, the, the game changers or who made the difference. And our one was if, if we keep a certain Henrik Larsson quiet, then we'll have a better chance of... He won in the game of football. Saying that Celtic had quality players all over the pitch, but he was the he was the difference. So if you kept him quiet and Big Oz and, and Ammo um, tried their best every every time they come up against him. But the, the, the biggest thing that jumped out at me about him was when he took a, f a few sore ones in terms of you know it's like you leave a wee, wee bit on them when you you obviously tackle them. He never moaned about it. He just got up and got on with it, and that was. Um, I used to get on your nerves a wee bit because you try to rile him up and take his focus off the game of football but he was probably that focused and that good let's be honest that it never um, tended to affect him Mark was asking you during the break about it as well we remember one at Ibrox where Craig the, Moore Craig Moore tell us oh, about that oh. one <laughs> yeah you yeah. can see it online yeah. um, he's took a but he's won the ball big Oz no doubt about it but he's uh, he's had a bit of a follow through and oh. He loved a wee follow through yeah, by guys, didn't he? Yeah, he did. The big Copa Mundial boots, <laughs> remember? <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the World <laughs> Cup boots. Yeah, <laughs> and it was a follow through, and I think he yeah. went maybe about four or five yards off the pitch. Um, but he just jumped up and got on with it. If that was anything else, <laughs> they would have been lying down getting a, a fair bit of treatment. But he was a top player, let's be honest with you. He, he was, he was. Um, and look what he went on to do after Celtic, Barcelona, um, Manchester United. But yeah, when you when you think back, the quality that that he had, he was he was a top level player. Mark, a really special player, Henrik yeah. Larsson. And I'm just thinking of the psychology. I mean, because he must have been at times really really sore, but he just got back up. What does that do to the defenders or the midfielders? The that opposition? annoys you. That is what yeah. it does. Yeah. That annoys you. <laughs> I I can't recall him. You know, whether it was a, an old firm game or or any game where he's been clattered, rattled. You know, whatever word you want to want to use actually getting up and kind of retaliating or showing a defender that he has been you know, rattled that he's railed up now. He may well have been inside, I don't, I don't know, but he certainly didn't show it in public. So from that point of view, uh, I think that speaks volumes about how he just managed to stay uh, focused. And, and I think as well, he had players around about him that would look after him. So if they thought, oh, Henrik's had a wee nudge, it wouldn't it be Henrik that would go and get retribution? Mm -hmm. But one of his teammates mm -hmm. would go and try and, you know, on his... Um, um, behalf, but aye, he was a top player. You only look at his his goal scoring record seven years, sensational, and then to kick on when the Champions League with Man United, very successful loan spell at Man, um, sorry, at Barcelona, and then a really successful loan spell at Man United. Sir Alex Ferguson basically begging him to come yeah. back again and loan, but he wouldn't break his, his word to, to Helsingborgs, I think it was at that time, and now. His pleasure is just going to see his son who's playing Champions League football with Copenhagen, who's built a really good reputation um, for himself as well, and that's what it's his pleasure now. Is that what he does? Yeah, that yeah. that was part yeah. of his makeup, but mm -hmm. that that was the one that I think that if he's not just playing against Rangers, I think if any defender was playing against them, they'd probably think I'm giving him my best here, mm -hmm. and he's not even flinching, or he's not even like re retaliating or reacting to it, and that's that sometimes gets in the, the opponents. Uh, mind um, so I think that was part of his game plan you know what I mean because like, as a centre forward genuinely they do take the most um, kicks or yeah. bangs in the bank, yeah. uh, back of the, the neck or whatever um, and they just tend to go on with it and that's something that you kind of looked and thought there's something special there and, I, and I, don't, I don't know what you thought of him Paul but you're talking about giving nothing away on the pattern in terms of like showing emotion mm. or showing see the interview oh, oh yeah. my god Oh, he was hard work. Yeah. Oh, he was hard <laughs> yeah. work. I didn't enjoy it. Didn't enjoy an interview him, interview him at all. And it was very rare. He wouldn't often give mm -hmm. interviews, but oh, he was. Well, he, just he, one, he was, one. Oh, well, hard work. <laughs> Honest to God. Well, I get, I yes, get, no. He, yeah, pretty yeah. well. He, he would not have the only time I, I, I saw him, the, and it's actually one of the best interviews I've ever seen is when um, Robert Snodgrass and, and, and Chris Boyd got him on their, their mental health. Um, yeah. podcast um, 
a couple of years ago during a uh, lockdown, it was called the Lockdown Tactics, and Henry agreed to come on and he spoke, he really opened up um, about his own mental health, about his, the, the family issues with his with his brother, taking his own life similar to, 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 um, to Boydie's um, situation. Oh, and Henry spoke and he, about it. Yeah, and he really opened up that and it was a fantastic yep. um, interview in terms of encouraging people mm. to go and speak up, you know, not to keep everything inside. Again. And it just showed a wonderful human side to him and for all the fantastic footballing career that he's had. He's also had personal tragedy um, as well, and, and that was, uh, you know, really, really, uh, really, really open. I really enjoyed that um, interview. And I've sp- since the, his playing career, I spent time um, with Henry at, at different events, and he always comes to like, uh, Stellan Petrov's qualities, and, and he's very good company. Yeah. Um, you see, and you can. And when I was talking about his son, uh, there, you know, the the enjoyment that he gets out of seeing his up. boy succeed. Yeah. You know, that's what he, what he loves. Um, and I felt for him too when he went to Barcelona. I think he went back to Barca as the assistant manager to to, to Ronald Koeman, right, yeah. and the club was just in a, in a mess, and they yeah. just couldn't mm-hmm. get a grip of it because of everything that was going on uh, off the pat. And he really cared about his coach and wanted to do really well. But the moment he's out of the game, 